Today you have to look to the depths of a museum archive to find the remnants of cigarette and cigar production which dominated Bristol's economy. But go back a few generations and the tobacco industry was shaping the city. First of all, of course, it, it provided a vast amount of employment for a very long period from the 1880s when they started making loads and loads of cheap cigarettes right through till relatively recently. But it's also affected the architecture of the city, the look of the place, some of the lot of the facilities that we have we owe to the tobacco industry one way or another. It all started when the first Henry Wills moved to the city in 1786, founding a dynasty which made cigarette brands household names. It would become the biggest tobacco operation of its kind in Europe. This is one of the last remaining factory buildings in the city. It would have been part of a vast production site which dominated this area. Today it's simply known as the Tobacco Factory and has a bar, a theatre and community spaces. It was rescued from the hands of the demolition squads by architect George Ferguson who said it was just too well built to destroy. The factories had made the Wills family millionaires and they felt they had a moral obligation to care for the city. They gave money to churches, hospitals and the university. The author J.B. Priestley once remarked that the Wills Memorial Building, which overlooks Park Street, was formed from the smoke of a million cigarettes. The Wills family also looked after its staff. They offered paid holidays, pensions and health care. But they were particular about who they took on, as this ITV documentary shows. And I always remember to my dying day, you had to take a, a reference from the chapel or the church. If you never had one of those, you couldn't get it in. 